Hello here and welcome again to another edition of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett. Hopefully everyone's off traveling somewhere far, fun uh, for this Thanksgiving holiday. I know we will not be. We'll be here in Lincoln um, ready for a big football game on Black Friday, Nebraska, Iowa, 11 a.m., virtually a pick em spread. I think Nebraska right now, show taping, is about a one-point favorite. Um, just the fifth time, by the way, Nebraska's been a favorite all year, hmm. um, which is, you know, puts in their, what's how many wins they have, Steve Sipple? They have five wins, Sean. They are five and six. So, yeah, I mean, Thanks, Steve. That's why we pay you the big bucks. Back to you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Send it back up to the booth. But big game in a lot of respects um, because of what it means for Nebraska. Um, a win over Iowa would signify <laughs> – Year one advancement, program progress, extra practices, um, an extra month of football at a place that, quite frankly, with the coverage and the fishbowl, needs an extra month of football just to to kind of keep the ball in play and develop this program another step. Yeah, we could do a whole show on why it's important for Nebraska to get to a bowl game, why it's important to win this game. Um, Rule, Matt Rule did a good job on Monday of, of laying it out. He talked about some players that – He'd love to develop uh, during this month. Um, there's a, there's just a lot of them. There's a lot of young guys in the, in the program that could use 15 practices. And what's happened over the years is these these programs that you're competing against have gotten an edge on you. Um, 90 practices they have versus you zero. Know, you don't have those. Mm-hmm. And the only last thing I'd say is I never, ever have liked the image of that big stadium over there and that training complex being dark in December. It's just no good. I mean, that's not what you want a, a program like this to to have a dark December where there's hardly anybody around for a month. It's no good. It doesn't do any good. All those machines, all that, all that equipment, um, all the personnel in a month, just you're not doing anything. It's not good. Not yeah. good. The significance is immeasurable for a lot of ways in the context of this season obviously going to a bowl game and just like sean said the tangible step forward is a program that you would make beating iowa in memorial stadium for the first time since 2011 beating iowa for two straight years for the first time since joining the big 10 i mean those are pretty substantial things if you want to call this thing a rivalry for nebraska to flip the script uh and and build upon what they did last year but um the bigger picture as you, you mentioned matt rule really laid it out i mean there's guys across the board that would benefit so much from another month of practice. Uh, he listed guys like yeah. Jason McShakeshack. I can't pronounce his yeah, name. Say Shake Shack. Yeah. That's what rule does. <laughs> McShakeshack. Yeah, McShakeshack. There you go. Um, raved about him. Says he's about to be a really good player. Uh, Dylan Rogers, DeAndre Barnes, Jeremiah Charles, Bryce Turner, all named job, specifically Bob. by Matt Rule as freshmen that they're really excited about. And for those types of guys to have another month of practices, to not only just get extra work, but you can tinker around with them a little bit, yeah. you know, put them in the, and with the first team group and just see how they respond where in the course of a normal game week, you might not get that opportunity. And so um, other guys too, Ruquan Buckley is oh. now moving to offensive what line. That guard? Yeah. Just kind of casually dropped it in there. said he moved to offensive line is going to be a quote, dynamic guard, him getting a month of extra practices at guard. Talk about accelerating your development going into the offseason. So there's the list is endless of why Nebraska desperately needs to when win. When you this know, game. I mean, a Matt Rule Good job, bowl month would be big. I mean, it, they would have a great plan. Oh, God. I mean, and they'll work. The, they'll work. Oh, yeah. it, it'll be like an extra sprint. I mean, Matt Rule, you know, there's they'll have scrimmages and things built in for young players, and um, it will be interesting. But, you know, the other storyline, Chubba Purdy, as, as we get ready, um, to head out to this game with Iowa on Friday. Um, I said in head Lincoln out. here, not yeah, head I'm out. I'm not going to Iowa City. We're not going to Iowa City. <laughs> that was last year. But um, Chubba Purdy has a real chance to kind of change the discussion points of the quarterback position because if he plays well against Iowa and they win, does that change anything about that quarterback position in the discussion of a potential portal piece they might try to add to this roster um, going into the offseason. Well, two things that come to mind as you ask the question is I think we all – I mean, you're, I think we're on the same page here. You're, you're saying he would have played well in two straight games then because you feel mm-hmm. like he played well against Wisconsin. I did. I th- I mean, I, I'd say he played pretty well against Wisconsin. Yeah, he could change the conversation a little bit. I don't know that 
he would do anything that you would say, oh, they definitely won't go into the portal for a quarterback. If he plays well, though, and wins, could he spook off other quarterbacks? Yeah, he could do that. It's all, it's always hard to answer these questions about the portal because you don't know who's in it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I don't I don't know who, who we're talking about. Like we're – you know, we always say, well, Nebraska go into the portal to get a quarterback. We always ask that question. My answer is always the same. Well, it depends who's in there. It depends if you can get him. Um, now, and who Ch- else is involved? Yeah. So, but Ch- yeah, I mean, Chuba did play well enough that it does make you wonder what happens if he strings together two and wins, you know, and, w- and beats Iowa. And say if they, I mean, wins the bowl game too. I mean, like, what if they, <laughs> yeah, it just, I think it makes it a lot more different discussion. Jeff Sims, too, is a fascinating piece of this. Like, will this be his last weeks in Lincoln? Will he enter? Well, can he enter the portal if he graduates? Yeah. We, he's got to graduate. He's got to graduate. Yeah. He's on track. According to the media guide, he's on track to graduate in December. So, I don't, I, now he was on track. We'll see if he does mm-hmm. it. We got to find that out. Because yeah. that's, that's a big for. piece. Because um, what he wants, I mean, but the thing is, Jeff Sims, I don't think he's going to have much of an NIL market value to go somewhere else. But at the same point, I don't know if he'll have the same type of NIL opportunities he had last year as he does you know this this for well next no year. you wouldn't think so i mean no. God, he's I, thrown I would six, hope not six interceptions and 47 pass passing attempts six interceptions and 47 pass attempts that that's you know guys in the nfl rob rob throw 47 passes in a game sometimes college they do but you never see six interceptions mm-hmm. um you, you don't get to six yeah with purdy you know the talk about the conversation of a bowl game like he probably benefit as much as anybody yeah keep in mind he was scout team just a few weeks ago like yep. he wasn't even getting second team reps hardly so i mean like this is a situation where he is just really getting started in his first real shot in this offense uh and if his debut is any indication of what he could be in this in this system i think that's pretty exciting but gonna, I, I agree with you it does not change the conversation i still think they go get a they go get a quarterback yeah. but i don't think it's a deal where like last year they're going to go take someone and immediately hand them the keys to the office oh, I do, that's a bit that'll be a big change now the other big change is he's going to play a much better defense this week i always got a much much better defense than wisconsin it's much better yeah they don't allow big plays but mobility hurts iowa <laughs> we'll see i mean how many mobile I mean, they played Mordecai, obviously, and did well against him. Yeah. But how many mobile quarterbacks has Iowa really faced? Like true mobile guys that can know. run four, five, forty. Yeah, not there was not a well, I mean, think about the we've the, seen the them big all. Ten, yeah, in the big ten, there's not that much. Right. I mean, Rutgers has mobility. Yeah. Um, but Chuba, I mean, he looked good. I mean, I am I'm, I'm intrigued and the emotions for Iowa are gonna be really high. They've won the West, they want to get the Heroes trophy back. Brian Ferentz's final regular season game. Um, you know, as offensive coordinator, what about Kirk Ferentz? Like, what what's his future? I mean, there, there's so many angles of the Iowa too uh, that add some juice to the to this matchup here. Yeah, here's what adds juice to me: Nebraska has lost three straight games, and I mean this, but but a lot of that would be erased. A lot of that bad feeling would be erased with a win. Oh, definitely. And a win against a ranked Iowa team that's a top, that won the first, West. It would be beating a ranked team for the first time since Oregon in 2016. That See, there's that. And here's the thing. Now, I hope you understand this, the distinction you make here. You have to beat Iowa. They're, they're not going to hand you anything. Mm-hmm. And that, that's good for Nebraska. If they beat Iowa and have to beat them, that'll be something. That'll, that, that'll say, okay, this is progress. Because I was not going to come in here. They they just don't hand games to people. Very, like how often do they do it? Very rarely. You got to beat them. Nebraska's got to close out Iowa, which will be really hard to do. There's really a lot of similarities do. between Nebraska and Iowa. The difference is Iowa finds ways to win at the end, and Nebraska finds has found ways to lose. That's it, and that's why it's hard to pick Nebraska. And what's another big difference? Iowa's got the best punter in the world. X factor, yeah, yeah, and, and Nebraska's punting, as we know, has been a, a major liability yeah. um, in this November um, stretch here. But all right, when we come back, we'll delve more into the offensive storylines as we get you ready for Nebraska versus Iowa on Black Friday. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washed. Uh, before we get into some offensive headlines and storylines going into Friday, 
uh, this segment of the Husker Online Show brought to you by Bauer Underground. They're helping shape Nebraska's infrastructure, and they're looking for people and new members to join their team. they got open positions for laborers, equipment operators, aerial linemen, foremen. They're searching for the best in construction. Visit Bauer Underground to learn more about their career opportunities and industry-leading benefits. They've got competitive pay, employer-paid health insurance, dental disability, vision, life insurance, 401k match, new top-of-the-line equipment, and a clothing allowance. And if you don't have experience, no problem at all. They're looking to train the right people to get in this field, to give you the experience that you need to build a long and lasting career. Check them out on Facebook. View the uh, testimonials about the company culture. They take great care of their employees. And that's one of the things Bauer prides themselves in. Um, so come check them out online at BauerUnderground.com. Uh, they're family-owned locations across Nebraska. So they've got opportunities everywhere. Come start your new career today. Thanks to Bauer Underground for sponsoring us here on the Husker Online Show. Okay, guys, let's talk more into the offense. Uh, we've already hit on Chubba Purdy, um, but what's it going to take? I mean, can Nebraska in this game against Iowa find a couple plays over the top? Can they free those speedster receivers up how once often, or twice? How often do you see that against Iowa? You did see it last year. Some guy named Palmer did About it. a year yeah. ago, we did. Yeah, but you don't see it very often. <laughs> It's gonna be really hard. I'm I'm really surprised at this this Vegas line. Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know how you move the ball. I don't know how you're gonna move the ball on them. Now that I don't know how they're gonna move the ball. Well, they're missing right. Cooper DeGene, though, who's an all American. That makes their defense defense different. I mean, Illinois was 15 13. Illinois easily could have won that game last week. Got 13 on them. Nebraska beat Illinois in Champaign. So I mean, Nebraska, they're not a great team, but they're not as I mean, they're not bad either. I mean, no, they're cl they play everybody close pretty much. You know, it's not named Michigan. But what scares you is that every game comes down to, as Matt Rule said on Saturday night, two or three key plays. And for Nebraska, the fourth and one, a missed sack, a couple third downs. I mean, there's three or four of those situations that Nebraska in this little losing skid has not been good in. Yeah, the, the big difference this between this game and last week's is the deep. I can't stress enough. Iowa's got a much better defense than Wisconsin. It's going to be harder. It's going to be harder for Chuba. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying they can't score 13. I think Nebraska might be able to score 13, but I wouldn't give it much more than that. You know, 14 maybe. Well, Iowa's defense only 15. gives up 12 per game. Right. You know, and they're not in, – and they're facing an offense that really struggles. That's scoring 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, which ranks what nationally? Uh, well, they're 12th in the Big Ten. Yeah. But guess who's right below them? Iowa. Yeah. Iowa's offense has scored three less points right. than Nebraska this season. So if all the talk about how bad Nebraska's offense has been, I was just look worried. at Iowa. Yeah. If they're not scoring with defense and special teams, they're averaging 18.5 points. I think points the number's 27 and a half mm -hmm. over under. I, was I'm that the lowest numbers. in Nebraska history, Robin, probably? Yeah. It has to be. Well, yeah. I mean, the... Iowa's Northwestern was 27 and a half or something like that. And that was like the lowest of Ever. any power five game, but any power five game, big 10 football though, in 2023 with the over unders, it's just like off the tracks. Hey, the good news <laughs> is on this, the good news for Nebraska is they're pretty healthy on offense. They're they're They do have their guys. As I mentioned, the three running backs are all, they've done a good job of sort of managing their pitch counts. Those three guys. That they're still playing. Emmett Johnson, Anthony Grant, and Josh Fleeks. They're live. And Chubb is fresh. Chubb is fresh. Kinda. He's playing on a I think. Groin. I mean, I, I never can get a hold on this whole groin thing. He doesn't look at all like a guy who's laboring. Oh, like, they can manage that. Yeah. I mean, they, there's ways to but know. he doesn't even look like he just looks like he was super fast against Wisconsin. To start. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he slowed he down. He wasn't getting bit. that separation in the fourth quarter. Okay. But again, he did that twenty two yard run. He looked pretty good. Which, yeah tiptoeing down the sideline yeah so who chubb knows? is in good shape i would say the offensive line who, 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 who i mean those guys have held up pretty well the receivers are healthy so at least they have that they're good. has there ever been a team that's had three different quarterbacks in one season have 50 plus yard touchdown runs oh, think about it. that i doubt it it's unheard of yeah. like to get those their their most explosive plays have come from quarterback runs this year i know it's crazy it's great and they got three of them mm -hmm. like three guys that can break in power five games 
And that's the other component to this is Chubba did all that last week on a week of working as the number one quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was his first week getting first team reps from start to finish. Now, this is going to be a short week, and so he's not going to get the, the full extent of practice reps, but that's two full weeks working as a starter. He's got a game as a starter under his belt, his first since last season. So maybe that can continue that snowball effect to where he's even better against Iowa than he was against Wisconsin. Was was Chuba so good against Wisconsin? And I know what you're going to say, Simple, you were there. Or don't you know this? I was at the press conference with Rule on Monday. He wasn't even asked about who's going to start, was he? Yeah, it's a foregone conclusion. It's a foregone. That's, isn't it interesting? It is. That we, we didn't even have to ask him. Just like, though, with Heinrich. Nobody was asking him. I mean, they were, but they just kind of kept riding with Harburg. And the ankle injury was kind of in a convenient, diplomatic way to go some to try something new and they gave sims another opportunity <laughs> he didn't just work out. didn't work out and but yeah so so i mean there's no shot of heinrich starting this game it sounds like heinrich Harvard. what if chubba would have struggled in that one drive against maryland makes you wonder like what would it, what would it look like now right mm -hmm. oh yeah it does make you wonder but but uh, on the other hand sean it, all, the, the the big unknown I have to bring up all the time, the big unknown that we don't know, it seems like media, we just go by what we see in a game, and we don't go by anything about practice. Every day they practice, and, and that's what the, the that's what you're judging. So I don't know what they – I don't know what – we don't see practice. You go off what, you go what the coaches say, and Rule said today that Chubb looked good. Yeah. So – they he didn't talk them. about anybody else. <laughs> no, and, and I just was kind of – at the end of the press conference, I was almost going to ask, did – so is Chubba starting this game? I just thought, oh, God, did I miss it? Did he say that earlier and I just missed it? But nobody asked him. He's starting. Yeah. I mean, come on. I guess, yeah. No, we're going to start Luke Longville. Well, he could – no, but he could say, back hey, if, if Harburg is healthy, there's a battle there. We, we have to – figure out who's going to win yeah, that and, and with Harburg, they would say, well, we're just going to let the competition continue and we're going to get both guys ready to play and see how, see what happens. They did do that. He didn't say that this didn't week. Didn't do that today. He talked about Chubba and you know right. what the next step he can take going forward. But I want, is there any shot that he would just come back at us and say, well, you guys never asked. Okay. We'll ask Wednesday. <laughs> Chubba's <laughs> timing and throwing rhythm and, and just execution. It, it was in a different level than we had seen from the other quarterbacks. Like he, he managed it really he well. He zips the ball out on the flats. And, and I like where Harburg, those plays never had much rhythm to him. Sims could do that a little bit, yeah, but you just can't overlook the glaring. Jeez. Like that's, it just the, seems he's, that's, he's out of it. The book is closed on that one. I think it might be. I don't know how you can go back to it. I, I hate to say it, but now I don't hate to say it as much as I used to because he's an older guy. He's making a lot of money. And he's yeah, making a lot of money. He's, it's no different than us saying, simple, you should retire. It's 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 pretty much the same at this point. He's a grown man. He he didn't perform his job well. I mean, I mean he's getting paid more than 90-some percent of Nebraskans right. make. Right. I've changed my tune on <laughs> on uh, criticizing players a little bit. If they're older guys and making a lot of they're money. They're making hundreds of thousands hey, of dollars. don't I mean, feel as bad. I mean, it yeah. is what it is. The, the, the guys in the NFL get hammered. Yes, they do. They're like, making money. Jeff Sims came here f for the opportunity. NIL was a big part of it. Yeah. It just didn't work out. You, but you still might need him. You still might need him. All right. When we come back, we'll talk defensive storylines next. You're listening here to the Husker Line Show. And we're back here on the Husker Line Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple. Robin Washett, before we get into some defensive storyline discussion, this segment of the show brought to you by CHI Health, uh, particularly their great priority care service they offer. Uh, it's all walk-in, no appointments necessary, three locations in Lincoln, uh, 40th and Yankee Hill. I've taken advantage of that facility many times. They've got the location on 40th Street between Normal and Van Dorn, and then one right off 84th in Holdridge here in Lincoln, 16 between Omaha, Council Bluffs, Lincoln, Grand Island, Kearney. Their hours are seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so if you're sick on the weekend, you need to get a prescription, um, you can go in there on a Saturday or Sunday. You can get it taken care of. They get you squared away. They even have a pharmacy on site at a lot of their locations that they can get you your medications right there at the location. Um, and you can go in and out. I've had many times where we've gone there and Within 30 minutes, I'm in and out of there with a prescription home, feeling much better 
so I can go work some high school football games. Yeah, and, what you're going to do tonight. I'm going to be busy, a uh, busy week, and it's important to stay healthy this time of the year for everybody with holidays and other things going around. So uh, thanks again to chihealth.com. Check them out at chihealth.com slash priority care to learn more about all of their great services they offer. Uh, all right, guys, let's talk Tony White because you heard the elephant in the room was finally addressed. Uh, Tony White's name is being mentioned a lot. For, as a candidate, he's been mentioned as a candidate for Syracuse. Dino Babers was fired um, this week, um, so he's naturally a candidate there. San Diego State, Brady Hoke's going to retire. Tony White coached there. He's mentioned as a candidate for that job. Um, and then, you know, even like USC's got a D coordinator job open, but I don't know if anybody would want to be a D coordinator for Lincoln Riley because the style of football. Somebody will. Well, the style of football he plays Bam. doesn't really help a D coordinator out much. No, it doesn't. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, it's not like he's a bad coach, <laughs> but you're not going to go work for Lincoln Riley to brush up your stats. Mm -hmm. Probably not. L Lincoln Riley might want to – I don't want to get off on a USC tangent here, but Lincoln Riley might want to kind of change his methodology a little bit. I mean, they're seven and five. I mean, anyway, yeah. Rob, what did what did uh, you hear Rule say today? Well, I mean, he kind of laid it out there that he has already had – He's had these conversations with Tony White and really all his assistants about guys that are going to get calls about other opportunities. And his advice to him is if you got an opportunity to advance your career and take that next step towards your ultimate goal, go get that job. And so that's what his message is to Tony White. And that, he's, yeah. But he his caveat with that, make sure it's the right one. Don't go take a head coaching job just because it's a head coaching job. Because if you go to the wrong spot and you – uh, game over yeah and you struggle there all of a sudden all the shine that's on you right now goes away very quickly and you might find yourself in coaching purgatory you'd be where, a nick saban analyst so he says be open to looking at other jobs but be smart and make sure that he, he said that they, he thinks they got a really good situation here in nebraska defensively they're going to return a lot of guys mm -hmm. um they're playing a lot of good defense and he thinks that they, they got the pieces in place to be in a good unit for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he did say a search firm called him about Tony White mm -hmm. and his message to people, including other programs, is hire him. Hire him as a head coach. Now, it's an interest, it's a fascinating discussion from our standpoint. He does leave a good impression, but there's a lot that goes into that with it. Again, we don't see. I, I wonder how he is on a day-to-day -day basis. I wonder why why Rule is so confident that he's ready. He's never been a head coach. But rule is very sounds very sounds very confident. Now maybe that's what he has to do, but he sounds genuinely confident that Tony White is ready. I don't. I what I don't do anymore, and I this is up until the last five years or so. I just don't sign off on hot coordinator is going to be a great head coach. Mm -hmm. And rule said to, to, today, it doesn't work that way. Like Will Muschamp. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Hot hot coordinator doesn't necessarily equate into good head coach scheme magicians are scheme magicians that doesn't mean they're great leaders like craig bull is a great example was not a great coordinator but he's been a very good head coach yeah that was the opposite way the opposite that, way yeah, so that, that went the opposite the traits that you need to be a head coach are different than coordinator traits. yeah 100 because the majority of your job has very little to do with football yeah, like you're, manage, you're managing said. 100 plus players and all their stuff off the field. You're dealing with, uh, you know, media. You're dealing with all the the, the fan base and the the, the opportunities like, you have to go out there. Like it's it's so much that goes beyond just X's and O's and drawing oh, yeah. up, you know, inside zone run plays mm -hmm. that go. And some guys are cut out for it. Matt Rule appears to be pretty cut out for it. Some aren't. Osborne was kind of the unicorn where he could actually draw up elite plays and run a program at an elite level. Yeah, and not he, many of those guys. People have tried to do that. Frank tried it. It's hard. Then he surrendered this play calling duties. Remember to Barney end. Cotton. Yeah, Rick Neuheisel. I've heard him talk on the radio about when he was a head coach. He called plays, but he said he got that part of his job the the scheming, the watching other opponents, um, determining how he's going to call a game. He got all that done before eight a.m before 8 a.m. I mean, he would go in super early because it, as a head coach at 8 a.m., that's when all the other stuff took over his, 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 his position where, I mean, hall hell tends to break loose. You guys have covered the team long enough to know, just think of all the, the stuff that can go on personal that's, life that, things. Yeah. That has nothing to do with like where I've said inside zone or, 
Well, now you have the portal and trans. And, oh my gosh, and, and nil. Yeah. Um. So there's way all more. That. Yeah. Back in the day, coaches used to have to release you from your scholarship. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole different management thing with all the things. You anyway, do. he feels that Tony White's ready for that. What we see. I get it. I mean, he's very impressive, like mm -hmm. at a podium. Mm -hmm. He does have the he talks kind of, like a head coach. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he has the persona. It seems like he has he has a presence, but I can't go much further than that. I don't know how he is on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. When we come back, we're going to shift our uh, discussion to the mailbag. Abby Barmore will join us. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. With Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washed, and let's welcome in Abby Barmore. Um, as we get to the mailbag, but before we get to the mailbag, this segment of the show brought to you by Caldera Lab Skin Regimen. Um, let me tell you more about Caldera Lab. It is a great product. I've been using it all football season, and and Steve Sipple tells me I look 10 years younger. Yeah, at least. At least. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's 30 seconds in the morning, 30 seconds in the evening, two, three easy steps. 94% uh, of men have sh seen results using Caldera Lab. Your fit, your skin feels fresher. You look younger. You feel better. Um, great uh, uh, gift idea, too. If you're looking to get something for your, your husband or your dad or a friend, uh, Caldera Lab has a, um, got some great uh, options as well for gifts. Um, check them out at calderalab.com. Use promo code HUSKER. To receive 20% off your order, that's calderalab.com, promo code HUSKER, to receive 20% off your order here at Caldera Lab. Thank you again to Caldera Lab for sponsoring us here on the Husker Alliance. All right, Abby, uh, let's delve into the mailbag where we start off. Okay, here we go. If Nebraska loses to Iowa and ends the season 5-7, and seven, what are the chances they're one of the 5-7 and seven teams to get invited to a bowl? I think it's just too early to say until we hmm. see how the week plays out because I think there's a ton of teams that kind of fall in this base camp of 5-7, and 6-6 six and six, six potential. The parity has never been more in the Big Ten and other leagues this year where I think there's just a plethora of teams. What we do know is Nebraska's APR, guys, is ranked 66th. So not bad, okay. not great. Right. So yeah, I yeah, I, I've looked at it. It, it. All I can do is say, piggyback off Sean. It's hard to tell right now, Abby. Like nobody can give you a clean. I mean, you could go through and pick the bay, but again, then there's the James Madison and Jacksonville State angles. They can go to bowl games, but they can't play in conference are, title are, games. Are we all in agreement though that that ends? I guess it ends the streak. Right, if Nebraska, it ends a six-year streak of not. Yeah, so it's, it's a no asterisk game. or anything. No, no, no asterisk. No, no. I mean, Mike Riley's team went with five and seven. They beat a ranked team in a bowl. Game. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just, I, mean, I just wanted to make sure it's a bowl. But I think there's like, if you go by the APR rankings, and I take this data from uh, Jack Mitchell, radio personality here in town, uh, he listed about fifteen or sixteen teams that are ahead of Nebraska currently in the APR that are right around four or five wins. And so to get to five and seven, you would need four or fewer of those 16 teams to, to win. Oh, there you go. So big long shot, including there's a couple that are, you know, 17 and a half point favorites. So not looking it's good. Probably not happening. Too long. Didn't read. Not there's your good. answer. Probably not happening. Sean, what do you got next? Why is Emmett Johnson still not getting the touches after weeks of rule in Satterfield saying that he needs to get more? I, he's getting the touches. I mean, Got 13 carries against Wisconsin. I mean, yeah, they're just not running a lot of plays. Well, they, what they do is they rotate those guys. They really, you, you seldom see a Nebraska running back get four straight carries, five straight carries mm -hmm. right now for whatever reason. Johnson gets 67% of the reps. Uh, yeah, that's what he played in the game. Okay. He's, he's the third down guy, too. So every passing down, he's out there 90 some percent of the time. And then the true carries. You know, it's a fairly good split. I mean, Anthony Grant is no slouch, so they they still want to give him get carries too. Yeah, and they've. I think, I guess, the thing I'd say is those three running backs, the top three with Fleeks, Fleeks added to the other two. Their legs are live. They look good at this point. I give Barthel credit for that. Now you could ride a guy a little more like Emmett Johnson. You could ride him and get him 22, 23 carries. But what would his legs look like mm -hmm. right now? We saw last year when they rode Grant hard. You saw the legs. Indiana Rutgers, that yeah. little stretch there. Yeah, you saw legs. You saw him dole out. 
he doled out. Mm -hmm. um, those guys are still alive, and they're, they're those guys. I love. I don't. I'm not saying they're the best backs in the world, but they really run hard. All three of them. I love that part. Emmett Johnson has some really good cuts. He's pretty good. He's pretty. He's good in a phone booth. He's and he just runs hard. Runs all the time hard. Okay. Should Rule get more credit than he does for Nebraska's defensive improvement this season? Hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of veterans. They returned. Um, I, I think he should get credit for the plan that they put in place for strength and conditioning and nutrition to develop players. Um, the emphasis on depth, playing a, a lot of guys. And Tony White obviously brought the scheme. So I think it's a lot of people that have helped this group play well. Um, but they've yeah. played a lot of guys, and they've developed well. One thing Rule himself noted on Monday was everywhere he's been, he's had a good defense. And usually they have a middle-of-the-pack offense. Yeah, if they could get saying. Nebraska's office to be middle-of-the-pack, just think how good they'd be this year. But So that's kind of been his hallmark, and I think he prides himself on the defense that his programs play and how he's able to build that. Obviously, Tony White's kind of the, the schematic – mastermind behind that but i think the core philosophies of of how they go about defense how they help their defense with their offensive play calling i think that's kind of been a hallmark uh, of rule for a long time and how they practice mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean they hit yep this is a program no now that hits we've we've talked about this program the previous two coaches riley and frost there wasn't a lot of hitting in practice they hit now they hit a lot and that's i think it's helped the defense i think i mean i the, the thing i'd add is yeah, Rule does get a lot of credit because he hired the staff, and it's and it's a it's not only White and Rule; it's the entire staff. I think that staff has done a really good. Knighton's job. been a great hire. Yeah, all, they mesh. I think that the defensive staff meshed really well. Which got which of those guys would you say is a drawback? None of them. All the all like Dvorak was kind of a name. You're like you didn't know oh, much he about. He gets but overlooked, but the linebacker. Look, look what they've done. Yeah, I mean, he's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All well, all three units have played well. What do you got next, Abby? Okay. Jordan from Twitter says that it feels like the entertainment in Memorial Stadium during the breaks is kind of geared towards the children or the elderly fans. Do you feel like this kills the environment and the energy for, you know, the team, the there. student section, the recruits? Yeah. I mean, we kind of hit on this um, in the post game show. Like when you're in Madison or we were in Minneapolis this year, um, just the in game environment Colorado too I mean mm -hmm. they, they knew yeah. they know how to get the crowd going and there's not as much commercialization built into their game day experience where Nebraska there's a lot more commercialization okay added corporate stuff added in there mm -hmm. but there's, there's things I, I just wish they you know just play fun music <laughs> like I mean Wisconsin in unbelievable environments and they don't overthink it no, they don't. Let's play a song that we know everybody's going to have fun to. Not try to come up with some Irish song easy, easy. and jam the lyrics easy. down and make the fan base learn this song for five years, and we still don't know the words to it. I think they also have been playing the same songs there for like twenty years, so everybody knows kind of they kind of got a routine going. So the sing-alongs kind of happen because everybody's used to it. So you know, maybe that's with your Irish song. Maybe in twenty years, everybody will learn the lyrics. Yeah, but too. the Killers is like on the radio. Everyone knows the kill. Like, well, yeah, Neil um, Diamond and Buttercup. I mean, some yeah, of these songs Neil are Buttercup. fun. Yeah, and it, again, it's a party. And I don't know. I mean, it's not. I, I wouldn't even say it's like an alcohol sales thing. They don't sell alcohol in uh, Camp Randall. Camp Randall. So. They seem Wisconsin. Would you say Wisconsin seems to gear their music more towards the students? Is that what you're saying? Mm, so it seems to me that they have probably they the, play a lot of oldies and classic rock too. That's true. You you yourself said this is the best music selection in the. Well, I've noticed it, <laughs> oddly enough. This is odd. Now I don't notice as much of the in-game stuff as you guys do. But their pre-game music is what I've noticed about Wisconsin is the best. I don't, I don't know who selects their well pre-game. Pre the players kind of select that, don't they? I don't they... know. I don't know that. I don't know. Here's that. another thing too. There's a way bigger student section at all those stadiums too. Nebraska's yes. tucked away in the corner. Yeah. Get more students, you're going to have more energy. Yeah, That's the Wisconsin the student section's a sight to behold. Yeah, it is. I mean. It's a massive. That's piece. what it comes down to. Me. I mean, that's why I think they gear their. Music if Nebraska forward. had an entire end zone full of students, their energy would be a lot more. Like they might have twenty thousand students in there, and Nebraska has twelve or thirteen. Yeah. It's a big difference. I mean, it's a lot more students. It says it I all right for there. sure. You're gonna say, "Sip." What do you think? You're elderly. <laughs> Thanks for your restraint, 
Sean. As the resident old. Yeah. <laughs> At Wisconsin, though, the like the press box literally shook at least twice during the game because yeah. of all the bouncing and jump. Now the jump around obviously is its own deal, but and then Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe it <laughs> bounced. So like let's not like praise the music too much. They played Cotton Eye Joe. They played Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah, but that still gets you going. It's like a jock jams. Yeah, and it did, it, but it did bounce. But it bounced. Hey, I'll tell you what, I don't notice the in-game stuff as much as you guys do. I don't. I'm I'm I don't know. One Jeez, thing I'm and I, tweeting the, showing the highlights tweeting. in the middle of the game of other games, like that doesn't do much for me. You don't like that, do you? Well, no, I don't either. It, I don't it, it's a buzz kill. Like I just don't know like how showing like the K State KU highlight does anything for the in-game environment. People now can check their phones and see those score. I just don't the get, highlights were cool in 1985. Like you might, but it's, use that to play a pump up, get the crowd going. Or even 1995, they were cool. Yeah, look at the jump around. Look at yeah, that's crazy. That's All crazy. right. Final question, Abby Barmore. What is your favorite Black Friday Nebraska football memory? Mm. You know, my early days um, <laughs> like that one. going out to Colorado, um, just th those are my first memories of, you know, covering Nebraska on Black Friday. I went to all those games. Being there in 01, um, you know, oh, it's yeah. not really a great memory, but it was you know, the la the fall of the dynasty. I mean, that's kind of where it began. 01. The 01 game in Boulder. And yeah, it wasn't a great game. I don't think you really realized what that day meant for Nebraska. But since that day, Nebraska football over 20 years ago has only been ranked in the AP top five poll for a grand total of one week. Whoa. Um, but Black Friday, yeah, you know, ridiculous. I, I just remember – how you know it used to be with Osborne Solich, you didn't have to worry about much. But for us, we've spent a lot of Black Fridays worrying about coaches and getting fired and, and just craziness, scrambling back, pulling up at the football coaches' offices on Saturday at six in the morning or eight in the morning to see if guys are clear. I mean, so <laughs> lately, Black Friday has been kind of a stressful time, like where you don't really have a lot of time. But probably the Sioux interception against Colorado um, okay. and, the, and the Henry field goal are probably the two of the God, best. That memories. was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah. And, I mean, just go down the line, like Bo saying, if he wants to fire me, fire me, like that sort of stuff. Like, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That was, Rex, I remember Rex that. Rex Burkhead and the 50 mile an hour win carrying it like 38 times. No, that, okay. That was the 12 that was a, game. The 12. 2011 game in Lincoln's when he broke the record. That's right. And the 2012 game is when he played just the second half. That's right. And they won 13 to seven. And it was the Still. coldest I've ever been. Yeah. It was a cool, it was a, it was a, it was about as cold a game as you can remember. What I remember most about Black Friday, I don't, and this is a favorite, it's kind of a favorite memory. And it was over, I overuse the word fascinating, but it was fascinating. It was when Bo said what Rob said, when he said, if you don't want me here, fire me, you know, that whole thing. First of all, it didn't make a huge impression on me because I was so used to Bo saying things like that at that point that somebody literally had to tell me, simple, that was big. But then I remember, I always remember, talking to him after that game and he wanted to talk you could tell he wanted to talk and i was driving this loop i just kept driving while he was talking and it was <laughs> up vine to 48th then down o to 27th and then i just kept making that big loop and at one point now this was awkward it was really awkward and you guys have been through this because you've been in these kind of situations he said they're not going to fire me you know which was significant news at the time but i couldn't really report it you know he 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 just dropped it in the conversation oh no they're not, they're not gonna fire me which at that point was like oh they're not seemed, <laughs> seemed inevitable like, at that are, you point. Are, are you sure about that yeah <laughs> uh, but he was sure it's 2013 he didn't fire him he goes he goes oh no they're not gonna fire me hmm. so he knew at that point they weren't gonna fire him hmm. he dared i course yeah hmm. but he knew already on that that friday night because he, yeah, he said it very definitively. I was like, "You sure about that?" He goes, "Oh yeah." They, they, I still can't. I mean, the the thought of like the 2014 season when they just beat Iowa to go nine and three, and Bo was going in there to meet with Icorse on Saturday. Yeah, or it might have been Sunday. I I think it was Sunday, Sean. Um, it was and Sunday. he and the coaches were getting ready to go out to. Recruit. It was absolutely Sunday. The coaches were getting ready to go out to recruit mm -hmm. and. I course fired him. Like he, he didn't. Bo didn't know that was coming. No, he didn't. I don't think he. Did. And, and that that was interesting to me because then like the email dropped like right before church started, and yeah. I, like I turned around. I'm like, let's get to work. Yeah. 
fun times. All right. Well, yeah, it'll be a little memories. I, mean, I got to think it'll be more calm this year. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we'll close the show. Uh, we'll discuss the big week ahead in the Big Ten Conference. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. Final segment here of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett. Before we get into some Big Ten discussion, uh, this segment of the program brought to you by Steve Sipple. Uh, guys, Larson Motors. If you're looking for a new vehicle, go for a new experience at Larson Motors. In Nebraska City. Larson Motors is one of the Midwest's only dealerships with all the major brands in one location. Finding your new Chevrolet, GMC, Hummer, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram. All those, all those brands. It's never been easier. Start your new experience today at LarsonMotorGroup.com or at Larson Motors in Nebraska City. Larson Motors, real people, real deals. All right, guys, let's close with some Big Ten discussion. Um, it wasn't, you know, on paper uh, an elite slate of games last week, but we still got some interesting results. Michigan was pushed by Maryland. The Wolverines won in College Park 31-24. Michigan State gets another win over Indiana 24-21. Uh, Hoosiers now 3-8. and eight, So you really wonder about Tom Allen's mm -hmm. future especially if they lose that oak and bucket game next week to Purdue uh, Northwestern 23, 15 winners over Purdue. They are now six and five bowl eligible now over newly named head coach, David Braun Penn state um, kind of just a slug fest, ugly game. Like you would expect they won 27 to six uh, wasn't real pretty, but they, they, they ended up looking dominant in the end. Iowa clinches the West 15, 13 winners over Illinois Ohio State um, handles Minnesota 37 to three and obviously Nebraska 24 17. Uh, Rob anything jump out to you in those games? The Maryland game certainly did. I mean that was Maryland came in as 18 and a half dogs and it looked like that thing was going to get away from them in a big way after the block punt it was fumble. 23 to three they, they fought they came back and you know games like that show you, you know, Nebraska probably should have beat Maryland and yeah. Maryland almost beat Michigan so um yeah, that one. And then uh, Northwestern. Braun, coach of the year. No question. How about David Braun, Sip? No question. Uh, Braun has done an incredible job. I mean, be, if you all you got to do is close your eyes. You don't have to close them. But think about <laughs> think about August and what was going on and what and how you regarded the situation. You thought, like most people, oh, God, they might win two games. It might, it's, that's going to be an utter disaster. They're terrible. They won one game last year and now they're sick at six with a great chance to get seven, maybe eight. You think about, he comes in this unknown guy from North Dakota state. Yeah. Never been. And, and they just threw him out to sea yeah. and say, figure out how to swim back home. And he, and he did. I mean, like, good analogy. That's it's beautiful. And he swam back. <laughs> he said, here I am. I feel good. Like, welcome to Evanston. Our legendary coach yeah. is going to get fired. We're going to throw you out in the middle of Lake Michigan. Yeah, swim back. And you got to figure out how to get this thing back. Yeah. Stuff like that makes this season for Nebraska that much more frustrating. You know, with the obviously yes. the opportunity being what it, but you've seen what Northwestern overcame, and you're talking about them winning eight games. Quarterback play. Yeah, they got, I mean, so you're talking about Brendan Sullivan. I mean, they've gone multiple quarterbacks. Yeah, they had Ben Bryant playing, too, mm -hmm. as a backup. We saw Nebraska saw Ben Bryant, who was limited against Nebraska, then played really well the next week against Maryland. Now they got Sullivan, their starter back. He's a dude. We did see against Nebraska, they hit the hell out of you on, on defense. Mm -hmm. Remember, that defense was very veteran and very Big Ten oriented. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was a very... I should say representative of the Big Ten. That's what I was struck by on Northwestern. I was like, oh my God, they do hit you. Mm -hmm. So they're good. Um, what else? Well, I'll tell you something else about I'll, one other observation. I watched Michigan Maryland because you know we've covered a night game. Michigan, you have to watch that quarterback a little bit. They haven't had to lean on him much this year. Now, then when they did lean on him, he didn't look ready for it, threw a bad pick. Uh, at the close of the half, didn't have his didn't have a great game. They're gonna need him. Odds are they're not gonna run it 18 straight times against a Whoever. SEC team in right. the college football playoff. Right. Or Ohio State or for Ohio that matter. Right. All right, let's get into this weekend. Um, there are eight teams now bowl eligible in the Big Ten. 
three will be fighting for bowl eligibility. Minnesota needs to beat Wisconsin. They're a dog. Um, Illinois would have to beat Northwestern to gain bowl eligibility. They're favored by six. And obviously, Nebraska needs to beat Iowa. Um, so th there's a chance of up to 11 Big Ten teams getting bowl eligible. Then you got the game. Ohio State, Michigan, oh. uh, big noon, 11 a.m. kick. Uh, the Wolverines are a three and a half point favorite. Uh, we do have a double header, by the way, on Black Friday. It's not just Nebraska, Iowa um, at 11 a.m. on CBS, but we also get an NBC night game. Uh, Penn State will play Michigan State in Ford Field in Detroit. You also have an NML game that day, though. The Dolphins and the Jets. Amazon. Yeah. Dolphins, Jets. I think it's Dolphins, Jets. Is that Rob? Rob? Dolphins, yes. Jets. Dolphins, Jets. Yeah. So 2 p.m. Oh, on Amazon. The, and the NFL hasn't done that. This is kind no. of the NFL punching back yeah. because college football is going to take away some of those December Saturdays okay. that were kind of exclusive okay. for the NFL. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to have playoff games in the future. So the NFL is like, fine, we'll play on Black Friday. And if you, you know, just take away some of it. But I, does an Amazon game really hurt a over the air rating that much? I don't know. NFL's king for a reason. Yeah, they don't they don't stage much head to head though. That's the thing. Like yeah. when more things are on, it splits right. ratings. Right. Yeah, That's because because most other sports don't try to even compete with the NFL. Right. I mean, it'll still be good viewership. It's football, yeah. and it's, there's important college football games that <coughs> fans are going to tune into. And yeah. the fact that it's on Amazon is just a pain in the butt to find it and do all that. So I don't know. It it won't be like a complete overshadowing of college football Black Friday. Big game here in Lincoln. Big all right. Um, Lincoln. we do. Um, by the way, have a great online special for our youtube listeners of husker online uh you can get two months of husker online for one dollar two months for one dollar uh simply use the promo code in you one uh that's in you the number one um and that will get you two free months of husker online for a dollar two months for a dollar uh we will be back as well for black friday uh husker online post game live probably a 5 p.m Start time. Got to get the Steve Sipple margaritas ready to roll. No, 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 not One on Thanksgiving. Round. Not on Thanksgiving. I'm, it's Black Friday. Yeah, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, it's not Thanksgiving. Black, Black Friday. Friday. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to spend Thanksgiving. I love you, Sip, but I'm not going to be. I'm with coming, you over. Yeah, I'm coming over. Sip's just going to show up. Marg's on Black Friday. We'll see. Do that. Why yeah. not? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, Sounds awesome. Yeah, and does, thanks again to our producer behind the scenes, Megan. Um, and congratulations and best of luck as Megan. Um, she's having her baby this week. So uh, we appreciate congratulations. all the hard work Megan's Big done congrats. for us. Um, and looking forward to it. And hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. We'll talk more here throughout the week. Uh, thanks for joining us here. And uh, check us out at HuskerOnline.com.